Hello, and welcome to Geographical Analysis, Lecture 3, Classification and Graphing. In this class, we're going to go over classification methods and graphing methods. But the first thing that we should talk about is the reasons for why we might want to classify and group our data. Generally speaking, classification uh, allows us to simplify a complex set of numbers by understanding how our data, data values are classified into groups and the meaning behind those groups we're able to create new knowledge from something that otherwise would be too complex to understand and therefore this allows us to a communicate something new about our data to an audience or to create hypotheses about why our data uh, have the values that they have in general we would like to be able to create groups from our data sets where elements within a group are more similar to each other than elements that are in other groups. So subjects within a group should be more similar with each other than subjects between groups. In addition to this, we'd also like to make sure that when we categorize our data, our categories are mutually exclusive and exhaustive. So mutually exclusive means that None of the data elements, and in this figure they're being depicted by the, the dots, none of the data elements exist simultaneously in more than one group. So on the left hand side we see that we see that this data element over here exists in both of these groups, the red group and the green group. So instead of that we would like to make sure that no data element exists in two groups simultaneously. Mutually exclusive refers to, sorry, exhaustive refers to the fact that all data elements must be in a group. So on the right hand side we see that this data element over here doesn't exist in either the red group or the green group, it's a standalone, and therefore to correct this we need to make sure that um, all the data elements, one, two, three, and four, all have a group. When we classify our data, we are going to lose some information. And this is best understood through examples. So if our original data set consists of a, uh, a, a sample of five people and their ages, where we know their age, the ages are 2, 13, 18, 40, and 88, imagine we wanted to classify these people based on life cycle. So we might say that anyone under 13 is a youth from 13 to 18, or to ni sorry, 13 to 19 as a teen, 20 to 55 as middle-aged, and over 55 as elderly. In that case, we can rewrite our original data set uh, uh, as indicated by this data set over here. So the 2 becomes a youth, the 13 and the 18 both become teens, the 40 is middle, and the, el and the 88 becomes an elderly. But what information have we lost? As you can see, if we are only provided with, with the second data set over here, you'll notice that we have two data elements, two data values that appear to be teens. But if we don't have access to this original data over there, can we tell anything about the difference between these two teens? The answer is no. For all intents and purposes, we don't actually know what age these teens are, other than we know they must be between 13 and 18. And while it might simplify our data set to now we can communicate and say the data set consists of two teens, one youth, one middle-aged, one elderly, uh, if we are trying to use that information to uh, in further analysis or we, if you're trying to use age in further analysis our ability is going to be hampered by the fact that we don't know the difference between the ages of these two teenagers and of course in a really large data set of hundreds thousands or millions of records when we classify our data into groups the problem of information loss is going to uh, still exist in this example down below, we've got cars uh, and their brands. Toyota, Honda, BMW, and Ford. That's our data set of four cars and their brands. And 
if we want to recode them as pertaining to the country of origin, then Toyota and Honda become Japanese, BMW is German, Ford is American, and again we have this issue. We've got two Japanese cars in our classified data set, but we don't know what make those Japanese cars are, in, are anymore. So if that information was important, the difference between a Toyota or a Honda, if that's an important piece of information, we've now lost the ability to use that information when we classify our data in this way. Another source of information loss is through aggregation. And in this case, imagine we have a household, so a, a house and the population of that house, or the people living in the house, and we know the age of each person, 2, 13, 18, 40, and 88. If we take the average age of that household, we find that the average age is 33 years old. And we will very often use averages and summaries and aggregations of data, like we discussed in the last lecture, in order to to simplify data sets or, or create meaning from data sets. So in this case, it's much easier for me to describe that household as saying the average age of the household is 33, rather than saying the people in the household are 2, 13, 18, 40, and 88. I can just say the average is 33. I've been able to communicate that very simply. But at the same time, we've lost all sorts of information now about the individual people in that household and what their ages are. And of course, in the aggregation case, we have the problem of ecological fallacy. Observe that the average age is 33, but it's not correct to think that there might be anyone in that house around 33 years old, right? We only have, we have these five people. No one's really close to even being 33 years old, yet we're using that number to describe this, this variable.